Kia ora Year 12 and Year 11 and Year 10. This is a practice task for Achievement Standard 2.4 and it's the one about St Mark's School getting some sunshades installed. So I'm just quickly going to look through the task first and then I'm going to go through fairly quickly how to um, work right through the task from the start to the end. So by this stage you should be getting pretty fluent in all of the basic skills. What you need to be doing is reading really carefully for how to think about the harder parts of the task. So we've got St Mark's getting some new sunshades installed and they've taken some measurements as shown below on the two designs. Your task is for each design to provide the following calculations. So we need to find all of the missing lengths, angles and the perimeter and the area. So if you're looking here, um, that should feel pretty easy by now. For design one, we've got an angle here. And we've got the two sides here. So the cosine rule is going to work there. Um, and we can do everything from there. Now, if you look at design two, when you first look at it, you might be a little bit worried. Remember, we're looking for an angle and the opposite side to use the sine rule. And we haven't got any of those. Or we're looking for an angle and the two sides to use the cosine rule. And we don't have any of those because we don't have this side. So what we need to do here before we start on design two is to remember that angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. And that's going to let me find this angle here. And then we can go from there. So that's the first part. I'm going to come back to that and go through that quickly. The more interesting part is that the company making the sunshades has pointed out that they're not actually perfect triangles, that they have curved sides, blah, blah, blah. The curve can be approximated with a circle that has a radius 1.82 times the length of the triangle side, as shown below. So, just reading carefully, we now have to figure out how much area we're going to be losing from design one due to the curved edge, right? We don't have to do it for both of them. That's going to save you a ton of time. And then we have to work out the new perimeter for design one. So this looks it, honestly, a little bit daunting when you first see this 1.82 times thing. But remember that what we've got is we've got a triangle where we found all of the sides early on. So we just take our number for this side and we times it by 1.82. And we do the same thing here. And we do the same thing here. And we're going to work with each of these triangles one at a time. So this is going to be triangle one. I think I made this triangle two. And this is going to be triangle three. We're looking to figure out how much area has been lost. So you can see it, for, the diagram's really helpful in this case. And you can see that the area of the triangle is this one here. So the area that we're losing here is this, which is a segment. And we're going to lose three segment areas from my triangle area. Okay, so that's a very bad drawing of those segments. Let's get rid of that. So that's what we're going to need to do for the first bullet point. And the new perimeter for design one, instead of having the straight edges of the triangle, it's got three curves, and these are arc lengths. Okay, so if you look at the formula that we're given, we're going to be using the arc length one, we'll be using all of these, and we'll be using the formula for the area of a segment, which is simply the area of a sector minus the area of a triangle, right? So there's your area of a sector, and here's the area of the triangle. Okay, for some of you watching this, um, that's probably enough that all you need to do is forward through to the bits where I get to the answers, but I'm going to now start going right back to the start, and we'll find the lengths, angles, perimeter, and area for those two shapes. So pause the video, and um, if you haven't done this task already, do this properly in the book and just see how long it takes you. I'm going to start um, by labeling things clearly. I'll make this point A, this vertex big B, and this vertex big C. This is side length B, this unknown is side length A, and this one here is side length C. So as I said before, we can use the cosine rule to get this length using these two sides and the angle in between them. So A squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a, which is 4.2 squared 
plus 5.3 squared minus 2 times all of this. Um, I'm going to work in degrees until I hit the curved stuff. Okay, so cosine of 81 degrees. A squared is 38.7655. Now, I haven't rounded that too hard, um, and I'm going to just stick to probably around four decimal places on the way through. So A has a length of 6.226 metres. It would be okay to round that to 0.6.23. You'll get tiny rounding errors, just hopefully they, they won't be too big, and that's why I'm holding on to a few extra decimal places here. So that's my first one found. Um, now we need to find the angles. So angle B, well, I've got this, and now I've got this. So that means that I'm good to do the sine rule. I've just noticed a really stupid mistake in here, um, which is, of course, that this should be side length C, and this should be side length B. So I'm trying to find angle B. I've got a matching pair of length and opposite angle, so I'm good to go with the sine rule. So angle B we can find as follows, sine B over 5.3 is equal to sine of 81 degrees over 6.226. Sine B works out to be 0.840788, so angle B is in radians, I got 0.9987, which is 57.2 degrees. And that means that angle C is equal to 180 minus 81, minus 57.2, which is 41.8 degrees. Okay, so we've now got the angles and the lengths. Um, we need to go back and get the perimeter and the area. Okay, so the perimeter is just those three triangle sides added together. And when I round that, I get 15.73 metres. Okay, so that's that one done. And now we'll find the area. Area is equal to half AB sine C. So you can choose, you know, any pair in the enclosed angle. Um, I worked with a sign with the angle being 81 degrees, and I got a final area of 10.99 metres squared. Okay, so that's that one done. Now we need to do the same thing for design two. But as I said at the start, this one actually turns out to be really fast, as long as you remember that the angles in the triangle add up to 180 degrees. So again, we're going to start off by labelling. So label big A, big B, and big C. So this is side length A, this is side length B, and this is side length C. I'll just get rid of some of this. Okay, what's angle C? Well, angle C is equal to 180 minus 58 minus 46, which is 76 degrees. A over sine 58 degrees is equal to, well, we know this one and this one. So it's equal to 6.2 divided by sine 76 degrees. And when you work that through, it's only a one-step rearranging, we get A is equal to 5.419 metres. So that's the first side length found. Now we do the same sine rule calculation over here. So B over sine of 46 degrees is equal to 6.2 over sine of 76 degrees. B is equal to 4.596 metres. Right, so we've got the side lengths, we've got the angles, we can do the perimeter and the area now as well. So the perimeter, 6.2 plus 5.419 plus 4.596, and that equals 16.215 metres or we can round that to 16.22 metres. The area is equal to a half. Um, I used 6.2 and 4.596 for my sides, and the 58 degree angle for the one in between, and that gave me 12.08 metres squared. 
Okay, so let's just make sure that we have got, um, oops, okay, something weird just happened. Let me just relaunch um, OneNote. And oh, here we are, it's all come back fine. Okay, I don't know why it did that. I just need to put in um, my units for the area because that's going to annoy me. So we've got our area and we've got our perimeter and we've got that clearly labeled, right? So communication is really important. So now we're on to the more interesting bit. And I'm going to start out by using the triangle that we give in the diagram. So here's the triangle here. And remember, we're just doing this for design one. So it's not too bad. Let's just put some numbers on. We know that side length Y here is what came from my first triangle. So it doesn't really matter which way around I have it, but I've left it with the same orientation as before. So Y is 4.2, Z is 5.3 meters, and X is 6.23 meters. Right, so that means that we can find these lengths here, and we're just going to break this out for each triangle. So for the first triangle that I'm working with, what would it look like? Well, it looks kind of like this. Mm, is that going to join up? Yep, that joined up. Very good. Get rid of the ruler. Um, we know that this length here is 4.2, and we know that this length here is 1.82 times that. And that equals 7.644 meters. Now, if you think about it, you're going to have three similar triangles. And if you see that and explain that in the assessment, then I don't think you need to do full calculations for every triangle. But I think I might not have seen that under time pressure. So I'm going to do this assuming that we didn't spot that we are going to have three triangles which have this length and then they're all three of them are going to be isosceles with this length being 1.82 times that length. So that means that the angles have got to be the same. And what we're after here is that we're going to be finding um, this arc length here. This is going to be the radius and this is the center of the circle. So what we need to find now is we need to find theta. And we've got um, all three sides, but we've got no angles. So we need to use the cosine rule for this one, and that's something that you should be confident with spotting. right? So if you've got all three sides but no angles, this is what we'll do. Cos of theta is equal to a squared here plus b squared minus c squared, 4.2 squared over 2ab. I think I might have done something wrong here actually. I'm just having a little look. Let me just go back to my formula sheet. Where's it gone? Hmm. So, never go too fast. Let's see. Yep. I ha oh no, we're good actually. We are good. I was just having a complete brain freeze on whether I had double squared the bottom line there. Okay, I'm going to leave that in the video because I actually want you to see that if that happens to you, um, you don't need to stress out, right? You just go back to your formula and check it, right? So it's this, right? So this is going to end up being two times that squared. So all of that works out to be 0 0.84905, and that gives me theta of 0 0.5566, right? So theta is equal to the angle whose cosine is that. And in this case, I am going to leave it in radians, because I'm going to be using the arc length and the segment formulas. But if you want to convert it to degrees, just to check that it makes sense, it's 31.9 degrees. So arc length AB is equal to R theta, which is 7.644 times 0 0.5566. And the lost area for this one is the area of the segment, which is half r squared into theta minus sine theta, which gives me this. And I'm going to do a part two video, so don't worry. 